My name is Tom Hoover. I am from South Jersey. I've been filming Jackass style stunts for 16 years, since 2004, since I was in high school. Um, I seen Jackass, fell in love with it. This is what I want to do. Film some pretty wild shit. I would, you know, done some wild shit. It's pretty cool. I love stunts, the adrenaline. The smile, like you put on somebody's face, like you can drop their jaw and make them laugh at the same time. You know, it's kind of cool. And sometimes telling a story and then watching the video, it's like, it's pretty cool. But I kind of got out of it for a while. You know, went online, tried to get back into it, trying to, you know, because we used to have a crew and everything, but after high school, I had tapered off and everything. And, but I wanted to get back into it. We used to film stunt hunts and um, against other teams and all and groups. And, uh, so I went to try and find a contest or something like that, anything. And I found, I came across a Facebook page, Stunt, the Worldwide Stunt Correlation. And uh, this guy, he's uh, called the legend. He is a fucking legend. Um, Tim Halberstam. Think. I'm not really sure how to say his last name actually, but he's from Maryland, cool as hell, loves stunts, he's a wild motherfucker. And so talking with him and, you know, showed him a couple of my videos and, you know, it's all kinds of people from all over the place on this fucking thing. It's pretty cool. Meeting a lot of people, you know, it's crazy getting around a bunch of a group of people that's like, you know, just as wild, wilder than you. It's, Intensity is crazy, like, but anyway, and then through that I met uh, this guy JJ Allen from POR Stunts, uh, Virginia, he, they're from, hardcore as hell, they had to the fucking boom, and they, I got invited to go film with them last summer, and we were going to do like a stunt hunt kind of thing or whatever, and he brings these guys from different states, and you know, it's pretty cool, like, Last, uh, 2017, I think he said 10 different people from, you know, 10 different states and, you know, get everybody together. I never ever thought about doing that before. It's pretty wild. But, anyway, go down there. I went away the whole month of September. Every weekend I was down there filming. Went, picked up Tim on the way and, you know, first time me and fucking, you know, lives in the middle of nowhere. Fucking bad to the bone. You got some crazy ass roots. And they just go up fucking hill, straight fucking down, like, <laughs> crazy driving. But, pick him up, so we go see JJ and the guys, and <clears throat> we, uh, we, it was great, that whole month. I met, uh, Crazy Mike from We Play Crazy, uh, I met the Amazing Hob from Dub TV, my brother used to tell me about them guys, I never tried to reach out to anybody. But this trip that I did the whole month of September was bad, like awesome. I had so much fun. The heavy crew, as they would say. Heavy fucking crew. But anyway, I want to talk about what happened to Tim. Um, I mean, like it was nuts that this happened right at the end there everything like we had a great month and when you film stunts there is always the anything can happen and like to try and be prepared you want to try and be prepared as much as possible and it's just we weren't prepared this time I thought I was but this, everything went wrong, man. And <clears throat> like my the whole idea, what was supposed to happen was I seen the 2017 one where he blew the fireball at him and it was huge and everything. Like lit his hair on fire. That was the task to get a haircut by somebody 
you know, by fire, it's more blowing a fireball. So I told him to kneel down in front of my tailgate and he's gonna blow a fireball and he's supposed to like, deliver disintegrate to where it's just fireball, like it's just a fireball coming at you. And he was gonna go hit him, blade his hair on fire, he sprayed axe in his hair and you know, so the effect was in slow motion, how I was seeing it, the fire goes, hits his face, and then it's going to hit the tailgate right behind him, and then it's going to blow out all over. So in slow motion, you would see, like, Tim, the legend, like, and fire all the way around, like, I don't know. That's what I was picturing in my head. Slow motion shot, thought it would be cool. But... You know, it went and got him goggles. We had goggles there, so for his eyes with the fire, like, went and wet down a towel. Got a wet towel, had that there. Why I did not go and get a bucket of water, you know, fire extinguisher, like, I don't, it's a horrible feeling, like, what happened was the most intense, like, it, can, it gets so real, like, it got so real so fast that I've never, ever, in 16 years, or whatever, however long it's been, it's never got that real, that fast, ever. That was... It's, it was wild, dude. Like, like, born tough, they tell me. Like, he was on the farm, all that shit. And thank God I reacted the way I did because it didn't go out, man. Didn't, like, I could not believe it. I had the towel. It was, like, like it was wet, wrapped it, you figure, smother the fire, and he's there to breathe, they go out. Guess what? This time, stunts go wrong. This is my first stunt I would feel like it went wrong. Like, we did one years ago, and, or 10 years ago, my uh, buddy Price, the idea, what we did was we took a hay bale, and um, my buddy Dixon held the hay bale for a tiki torch flew on him, blew a fire, lit the hay bale on fire, threw it, and hit him in the face, and it lit half his face on fire. We had somebody there with you know, a bucket of water, and we got him out. And it was, that was wild enough. And what happened to Tim is like, it's horrible. Stupid on all parts, because it's like, like, why didn't, like, why didn't we go and get water? Why didn't we, like, I don't know, man. It's, um, like I said, it's, it got real. And once the fire was out, like, I seen his lips and his nose and it was just skin hanging. And I, first thing I did, I thought, like, what did I just do? Like, <laughs> they were hanging off. And then, you know, got to the you know, hospital, and I think he said it twice. And I told him, I said, well, get the fuck up then. Let's go. You know, and here we are. I'm in, you know, Virginia, and I, I don't know where the fuck I'm at. Phone don't have service in the fucking middle of nowhere. So I'm at somebody's backyard and new service, I don't know what a hospital is and I finally get service, I call JJ up and you know, right before this, fucking Kyler Vick goes bust you know, one of the tests bust a bottle over your head. He fucking put water in it, bust a bottle on his head and <laughs> stabbed himself. Like, they rushed to the hospital. And like, we thought they were joking, they came up, he Kyler Vick left. Bleeding everywhere, it's crazy. I didn't even 
see the footage until afterwards. Like, it was up on the hill. They were down here. We were up here filming. And then right after they left, it wasn't even 10 minutes later, this with Tim, like, the accident happened with Tim. And now I'm panicking. I'm calling JJ. I'm frustrated. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? And because I don't know where the hospital is, and he's, you know, Tim's like this, and he's like, you know, screaming. And, oh. So I finally get the, you know, the address, and it's, it's like 25 or 30 minutes. It didn't take us that long. I was a driver, motherfucker. I was on the little back country road there, and I had a couple cars. I couldn't pass nobody. Could, like I said, these motherfuckers got bruised. Or, wow, they'd be a good driver. Um, once I got on the highway, I went as fast as I could go. I went so fast that my truck topped out, and the Tim would hold on. He was holding on, and then. He would look up, and we almost there, we almost there, and the truck jolted because it topped out. And when he looked up, he smashed his head on the goddamn, the fucking, the oh shit part right there. It's, it's like I started cracking up. It's, it was, for, like, it was funny, but what was going on was not funny. His... That car ride was one of the, probably like it was horrible. Listen to somebody scream like that, and there's nothing you can do for them, but just get them to where get them to somebody that can help them. Like the red lights and like I wasn't st like we probably got there in 10, 15 minutes, half the time, but earlier. Before this happened, a couple of weeks back, he had set a mortar off, I believe, on his lap. It's in episode nine, and he already had burns. And we went home, we went to the doctor, burn cream, whatever. And so his mom was worried about it. You know, don't do nothing else with fire. So then the next week, I'm down there with him, and we're uh, at the film spot, and they got wrestling rings, like on this bus. And we take 8,000 firecrackers. He's going to do the fire, the um, firecracker mummy, whatever you call it. Zach Holmes did the suicide vest, the firecracker. So he's been wanting to do this for a while. And Zach Holmes did that. So he's up in it, I guess, whatever. And we wrapped 8,000 firecrackers to him, lit him off. So now this kid has burns everywhere, like <laughs> all over his body. All right. The next week is when the fire ball to the face happened. When we got to the hospital, I remember we walked in, he has no shirt on, and he's burns everywhere from these firecrackers. His lips and nose look like they're hanging, like the voice it's crazy. Freak show. I'm bleeding from my fucking forehead because I got punched in the head with thumbtacks right before we did the fireball. So we walk in and they got nurses, like everybody, there was sheriffs there, I mean, they're not there for us, but it was just a shitload of people and everybody's looking at us like, what the fuck's going on here? And we're trying to tell them what happened because he sat right down in a wheelchair and <laughs> yeah, fireball, we were, we were filming, we were filming. And they're trying to figure it out, they're looking at his stomach and his back, like, and he's like, no, 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 this happened, this already was there and we're here for my face, it's... It's not funny, it's just, it's a, such a crazy story to look back and think and like, it's very, it's hard as fuck to talk about. What, like, but anyway, they took him back and I'm sitting in the waiting room, I, then I went out and I drank a beer and so I called my brother and told him what happened, he was the first person I called and, you know, he was panicking, he's like, what's going on and, you know, you know, come on home, and like I said, I'm not gonna leave. And so it's always very easy to. I guess I don't know, don't run, but so I talked to the doctor and I explained to him what we did, and what food we used, and, you know what actual was a fireball, and 
this whole time, like I never ever thought about the fire going down his throat. And like the doctor told me if I didn't get him there when I did, that he would either have a trach in his like a uh, in his throat, a hole in his throat for the rest of his life, or he wouldn't be here. That's how he put it to me. I I couldn't know like I, he couldn't tell me a whole lot, but he just told me you it's you did good by getting him here as fast as you did. I, you know, like I said, I just met these guys. <laughs> I don't know their families or anything. Like, I had to meet his mom and dad because they transported. They. They transported him to a burn clinic. And that's like, I really, really, really got scared then. Like, I was already scared to death. Like, what the hell, I just ruined this kid's life. What the fuck was I thinking? You know, too fucking close. So the group went on. We filmed it twice before that. Didn't think about the stuff already being on the jacket. Like, his figures, you know. Got a wet towel, you put it right out, and then bonfires for fucking years. Like, oh, so fucking intense, man. But they transport him to Virginia, like another part of Virginia, and to a burn clinic. And left that, that was like at 9.30 or 10 o'clock, something like that. And he, um... I went back to JJ's and I got his medicine because he, you know, has certain medication he has to take every day. He said, I don't really know this kid, didn't know, know his family or not. So my quick thing, I went back, got his medicine bag, and I had to drive two and a half hours. And we, you know, started filming that day at, um, I don't, I don't know, one o'clock, something like that. So we got a late start. By the time we actually started filming, it's probably like 3, 3.30. So it was a lot of daylight left and like this should happen right away, but it was like 9 30, 10 o'clock, so then I had to go back to JJ's, I got his medicine bag, then I drove from JJ's. From JJ's it was two and a half hours to the burn clinic. And I did I ended up getting there at like four thirty or five o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> I had to actually pull over on the I think it was Highway 64, Interstate 64 I was on. And I had to actually pull over because I was falling asleep behind the wheel. I, think I pulled over a rest stop and took a couple hour nap. And, you know, my big thing was, you know, I couldn't get a hold of nobody, didn't know his family, like I said. And I, he went to one hospital and he's going to wake up in another hospital and nobody's going to be there, is what I was thinking. Cause I don't like hospitals or nothing about them. Waiting there, seeing people in them. I, I hate hospitals. I refuse to go. But I got there and like by myself I like, what I thought anyway and go up to the security guy and I tell him I'm here for so and so and you know it gives me an attitude right away. Oh, it's a little late uh, for visitors, don't you think? Motherfucker, I just drove two and a half motherfucking hours. And I'm the one that put him here. I uh, kind of gave the attitude back to him. I forget what the fuck I said, but... I went up to see him, and he's in ICU. He's, you have to put this gown on. Everything's got to be covered. Your hands, everything. You can go all the way down. And... Then, and while I was getting the gown on and all it's I see this lady get up out of her chair as I'm walking in and I was like oh my god like I was relieved that they I knew who she was not because I've met her before but it was mom and dad and I was so relieved that they were there but scared at the same time because I'm waiting for 
like fireworks and had every reason to be like that. But very understanding and you know realize if you're gonna do stunts like things can't happen. You never ever want any like you never want anything bad to happen. But when you step it up things can't happen. And she was very understanding. I watched his dad get up off the concrete floor to find out who I was and introduce myself. I said, my name is Tom Hoover and I'm the reason why your your son is here. And they, like Tim had all kinds of wires hooked up to him. He had, you know, ventilation tube down his throat and you know was in an induced coma like it was horrible. I felt so, so bad. I, it's very, it was crazy. And I was talking to his mom, I told her what happened. And we walked up and I touched his hand on like she whispered in his ear, Tom's here and this kid jumped up. Like he was came back to life. Like he was dead and then he came back to life. He looked at me with both fucking eyes and lay back down and he didn't open his eyes no more. And all I could think about was he's a tough motherfucker. When I looked at his mom, I said, same thing, he's a, t he's a tough kid. For him to be able to just sit up like that, and I didn't really know how to take it at first, because it's like, you know, he can't talk. Like, is that a mad look? Ha! <laughs> you know, I don't know his facial expression. I couldn't, like, my head, my mind was racing. It was, and then not being able to do anything, like I put him here and, you know, they were telling me a couple of days and they got to do telly. Like, it was nuts. Then I had to leave and come home, like, I put the kid in the hospital and left and came home. Peace out. That's not the, that's not the way to look at it, but. It's, The trip, um, wouldn't change it for nothing. We can't change it. What happened is, did happen, and it, it will better. It will make me smarter and like slow down, like think more, like better prepare myself and the people I'm around for future stunts. And I, I, I love you, buddy. I'm very, to this day, it's like, it's very hard to talk about. I couldn't talk about it. First, when I came home, I laid in bed for probably a week. I didn't talk to nobody. Nothing, like, it fucked my head so bad. And then he was in, like, the hospital for so long. It's like, never, never wanted, like, like <clears throat> I'm glad you're still here, buddy. I'm glad I was too fast thinking and get, like jumped on you when I did and didn't let that thing get keep going. And imagine like everybody else was scared. Nobody else jumped in. Like, and how do you? <clears throat> That's my, you know, side of this story. It's it's fucking wild, man. But he has made a full recovery, minimal scarring. So it's worked out the best way it could.
it was pretty intense what happened and sounds like a fucking made up story probably it's like so crazy but I had a lot of fun great group of, group of guys and look forward to filming with you guys even more motherfucker cause you know Hoover's gonna bring it bitch I want to show you guys how fucking serious this was to me. It was the scariest thing in my life. And it happened to Tim. And I, I hate it. So glad it's still here, but I'm just showing how serious it is. What I look at every single day. Whoa, are you recording me? There's a bruise on my finger from coloring. Oh, of course, I am. I got some snow. Holy shit, it's cold. But, like I said, it was pretty, very intense what happened to Tim. And for all you motherfuckers that want to wanna talk shit, like a motherfucker doesn't care, I don't want to talk to you, mate. I want to talk shit like nobody cares. Why can't you see the footage? Maybe it's too fucking hard to look at, motherfucker. You'll see it one day, but guess what? For anybody that ever wants to think that, you know, the wrong fucking thing about this situation, check out what I look at every fucking single day. That's a fucking pet. That's what they gave me to put on my fucking shirt when I went to go see him. You see the date? Mm, yeah, a little faded, but I remind myself every day of how real it can get. So keep that in mind. For everyone that ever wants to do stunts or does stunts, whatever, think it, they be prepared. And the people standing on the side, guess what? If you're there to watch, be there to fucking jump in and help out too. So think of shit, safety, whatever. I mean, it's kind of stupid to say because you're putting yourself in harm's way, but every day, every fucking day, I love you, Tim.